everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Gina Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited, yet another day, because today at the Young's house, Gina Young is gonna share with you all how easy it is to make delicious pepper steak. This pepper steak right here, it's bomb. It's so easy to make. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients, and you know, you make a Gina Young style, it's gonna be so tasty. Y'all never had my pepper steak before. You better make you so. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. The first ingredient that you will need is you're gonna to need to find out what kind of beef you wanna use. Typically when I make pepper steak, I always buy the uh, beef stew meat. And here's what it looks like. Now we have washed this beef stew meat off with lime juice, salt, and cold water, and then we've pat it dry with a paper towel. It does come into chunks, but you can slice it if you want, or you can use it in that chunk. You're gonna need some beautiful veggies so we can make our dish nice and bright, and also the veggies are going to give a great taste. So we have a beautiful green bell pepper, red and yellow bell pepper, a nice sweet Vidalia onion, and we have some beautiful tomatoes here. You're going to need either some Shaoxing wine if you can find it, or you could use white wine. Now, between these two here, choose which one you want to use. When I make this, um, sometimes I use the oyster sauce, sometimes I use the fish sauce. All depends on how I'm feeling, or you could use the both together. We will be using some soy sauce and whatever kind of broth you have around the house. If you have beef broth, amazing. I have vegetable broth, we're gonna be using that. You cannot have pepper steak without white rice on the side, so I'll be making some white rice. And you're gonna need a couple of spices so we can spice everything up. Here's what you'll need this way. You're gonna need some cornstarch, and right here we have some sugar. You will need some parsley flakes just to make everything nice and beautiful. Some garlic powder, some black pepper, and salt. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yet so tasty recipe. I couldn't be more excited for this here recipe. Let me know in the, com in the comment section below, when is the last time you had some pepper steak? homemade pepper steak that is. I'm gonna show you how to make it. I'm gonna show you how easy it is and it's packed with flavor. So now, decide if you wanna leave your beef in chunks or if you wanna slice yours up. We're gonna slice ours up, okay? So let's take our chunks, if they're big. If, if they're not too big, we're not gonna worry about it, okay? And here's what I like to do, right? Just like so, okay? I hope that you all are having an amazing day today. Look at that. How many of you thought that uh, pepper steak is something that's hard to make? I'm gonna prove to you that it's not hard to make and it's a lot of fun. Absolutely, anyone you make this recipe for, oh, they're gonna come back and they're gonna say, where the heck did you get that recipe from? Be sure to tell them, Gina Young showed me how. Absolutely. Okay, so if there's a little bit of fat that you wanna trim off, now's your time to get that done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all of that beef, get it nice and sliced up, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you all how to make a marinade for this beef that's gonna make it nice and tender. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna talk about how you're gonna marinate this meat and why you're gonna marinate it this way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a technique that's called um, Velveteen and velveteen make have you just put it this way have you ever been out to an Asian restaurant and when you bit down into the meat it was just soft as butter it was so tender your grandma with no teeth could bite into it that's what we're gonna do to this meat today and always when I make any type of stir fry or Asian recipe I velvet the meat we're gonna get it nice and tender and here's how it's done like I said I told you all earlier if you don't have Shaoxing wine, you can use white wine. We're gonna put some in our beef, and I've sliced all of the beef, keep that in mind. That's all you need, don't get crazy with it, okay? We are gonna use some salty, which is our soy sauce. Get you some in there, don't worry about measuring it. Just like so, pretty simple, right? And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put a couple of pinches of sugar in, and I don't want you to freak out and say, oh no, it's gonna make my meat sweet, because guess what? It's not, I promise you, because this is gonna have so much other flavors going on, it's not gonna be sweet at all. Okay, now what's gonna make this nice and tender is the cornstarch. Now, 
You can also use baking soda, but if you're that person that you say, I don't want to use the cornstarch, I'm going to use baking soda. Use a little tiny bit because baking soda can give you a weird taste if you use too much. So now we're going to put some cornstarch on here and we're going to let this literally set for about 35 minutes, get nice and marinated, and it's going to become very soft. Okay, I'm going to go right in with my hands and I'm gonna mix it all up. Oh, I do wanna put, I'll also put some uh, garlic powder in there, okay? I'll need to wash my hands before I grab the garlic powder. All right, so now we're gonna mix this up and it smells delicious already. Keep in mind when I come back, I'll already have garlic powder in the meat. Be right back. Oh, it smells good. So now we're gonna let the meat marinate. And like you said, you really only need 35 minutes to let it marinate. Okay, so now here's what we're gonna do. Wash off your veggies, all right? You never know, you know, who's handled your veggies. And then also you always wanna wash off those pesticides. Here's how I like to cut my uh, vegetables when I make the pepper steak. Okay, let me show you. I couldn't be more excited. I can't keep saying it. All right, can't stop saying it. I need another knife. Give me a second and I'll be right back. Fuck. Okay, everyone, sorry about that. That knife was dull as a butter knife. Okay, so here we go. Here's what I like to do. We're gonna chop it in big chunks, just as if you were to go to the Asian restaurant. This is how they would be cut. And it makes the dish look nice and beautiful. Now. You don't have to use the different colored bell peppers. I like to do it because it makes it nice and beautiful. And then again, when you think about it, each bell pepper, each different color, really does let off um, a different flavor, and that's amazing. Okay, so now let's get the red in here, just like so. All right, gorgeous. Let's get that in, just like so. And then we'll cut our green, same thing. Same thing with the onions. We're gonna cut up those onions the same way. And I wanna talk about these peppers and onions really quickly. When you cook these, you do not wanna cook them until they get mushy. You know, that's like the worst thing that you wanna do. What we're gonna do is just cook them a little bit because you want them to still have some nice bite to them. And the longer that you cook these, they'll lose their vibrant color. So don't cook them too long, okay? In we go with our green bell pepper. We're gonna chop it up just like so. When I come back, we'll tackle that onion. Okay, so what we have here is our beautiful veggies that are nice and chopped up. And I went ahead and cut the onions off camera so I didn't have to cry. <laughs> okay, so that's what we have gorgeous, right? So now we have a hot pan over here with a little tiny bit of olive oil in it. And really, it's just a little tiny bit. That's, that's all you're gonna need. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start to cook this meat and what we're looking for is a nice beautiful golden brown color okay so let's get the meat into the hot pan just like so and leave it alone you know let it get a nice sear on it and leave it alone it looks like a lot of meat that's because it is now it's up to you this is about three pounds of meat but it's up to you how much meat you want to use in yours you can use a little bit or you can use a lot like I'm using. Like I said, I'm using three pounds when I come back we're going to run over to the stove and get started on our rice so you can see that we have boiling water. I have salted my water. Anytime you're making rice, potatoes, or noodles, salt it so it has flavor. We're going in with two bags, just like so, and all you need to do, cook it for 11 minutes. It turns out light and fluffy every time. So while our beef cooks and our rice cooks, which I've put both behind me, let's go ahead and start on our vegetables. Like I said, don't cook them too long. You want them to still have some crunch. The shorter you cook them, they'll stay nice and vibrant. The longer you cook them, they'll lose their vibrantness, if that's a word. <laughs> so we have a little tiny bit of olive oil in our pan, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna season up our veggies. Use a little tiny bit of sea salt, and when I say a little bit, you really only need just a little bit. That's good, okay? Some black pepper, absolutely. I hope you all are having an amazing day today, if I have not said that yet. We're not gonna cook these long, keep that in mind. When I come back, I'm gonna share with you all how easy it is to make our gravy. We're gonna start it off over here and then it all gets put into the pan to thicken up. Before we go any further, let's go ahead, take this time to chop up some gorgeous tomatoes. 
I, you know, some people don't eat tomatoes in their pepper steak. Me, here at the Young's house, I have to put tomatoes in our pepper steak. It is delicious ingredient if you try it. Now, what you, you can ruin it. Now, let's talk about how you could ruin it. What you would do, if you want to ruin it, put your tomatoes in too early, they'll turn into mush and it's disgusting. But what we're going to do is right before we turn that burner off, whenever when the gravy's in, it's nice and thick, then you throw in your tomatoes so they can just get barely heated up. Oh, delicious. So now that we have our tomatoes cut, I'm going to come right back, show you all how easy it is to make this delicious gravy Gita Young style. Right away, you can start to see that we're getting some gorgeous color onto our beef. Let's give it all a nice turn. Oh yes, and it smells so good. Now what I'm gonna do after I'm done stirring my beef around, I'm going to drain the uh, rice, open it up, put a little bit of butter in it, a little bit of parsley, just like so. Oh yes, look at that. Yes, my rice is done. Beautiful, nice and fluffy. Take a look at these gorgeous veggies that we have here. Cook them for seven minutes and then turn them off. You can literally see that the onions are starting to get nice and translucent. And what that means is clear to color. Once that happens, turn that burner off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off now. Beautiful. So I've taken the rice out. It's nice and fluffy. Put a little bit of butter in there, a little bit of parsley just to make it nice and beautiful. So now we have about two cups, just about two cups, <coughs> excuse me, of our broth, any kind of broth, all right? I'm using vegetable. We are gonna go in with some fish sauce. Fish sauce is amazing. I know some people, when they hear the word, they say, oh no, but guess what? When you go out to get Asian takeout, this is what's in it, and it has that umami factor. Make them say umami, but that's how good it is. So now here's what we're gonna do, put some soy sauce in. Oh yeah. Just like so, don't worry about the measurements because in the description below, I promise you, I'm gonna give you the measurements, okay? So don't freak out about that. Now we're gonna go in with a tablespoon and a half of this beautiful oyster sauce, okay? So now get in there, just like so. Let's grab a little bit more. I wanna mix this all up, gorgeous. You can't go wrong with this recipe. It's easy to make and it's delicious. Anyone you make it for, they're coming back for doubles. They're coming back for a second plate. Okay, so now that that's done, I wanna talk about our cornstarch slurry. We're gonna take three tablespoons of the cornstarch. We're gonna mix a little tiny bit of cold water in it. And as soon as our broth comes up to a boil, that's when we're gonna put our cornstarch slurry in. Everything gets nice and thickened up. The tomatoes go in last. Okay, so our meat is done. We've taken the meat out the pan. I've wiped my pan. Now, let's take our cornstarch. And look in there. Can you see the water that I have in here? Got a little bit of water in there. Okay, cornstarch going in. And you want to mix it until it's well incorporated. Okay, a little tiny bit more. Mix it up just like so until it liquefies. That'll quickly happen. Okay, and if you didn't want to use water, you can absolutely use the um, broth here that we have. See how everything's nice and liquefied? That's what we're wanting. This is going to thicken up that gravy and make it nice and tasty. Beautiful. So now here's what we're going to do. Let's take our meat. Where is my meat? I'll be right back. <laughs> Gorgeous meat going into the pan. Oh, yes. Got a nice hot pan there. And then also, let's go ahead and put our veggies right on top. And from here, everything happens really fast. Make sure you invite a lot of people over because this is a nice amount. Okay, so let's give it a nice stir, just like so. Let's bring everything back up to heat to where everything's nice and warm. And then the next step, we're gonna pour in this gorgeous broth. But before we pour in the broth, we need to put a pinch or two of sugar into the broth. Just a little bit, come take a look. That's it, just one pinch, okay? So now we're gonna give this a nice stir. Let me grab my handy dandy spatula here. Oh yeah, we're almost to the finish line. Go ahead and pour your broth in. Let's give this baby some flavor. Oh yes. Stir it around just like so. Let that come up to, let that come up to a nice boil. As soon as that happens, cornstarch slurry goes in, it thickens up, tomatoes last. 
So everything's came up to a boil. Everything's nice and warm once again. Go ahead and put that cornstarch slurry in. <laughs> it's gonna lighten it up at first, but then it'll, dar it'll darken back up, okay? So now watch this. Literally, right before your own eyes, this gravy is going to thicken up, and you have some of the best pepper steak, Gina Young style. And we can't forget that very last finish, we're going to throw in a nice amount of black pepper in here. Ooh, you could even put some red pepper flakes in here if you wanted to. Yes, look at that. Be back. Take a look at this thick gravy. Ooh, that's what you want. Not too thick, but then again, not too thin. Okay, so now if you want tomatoes, you don't have to do the tomatoes. Don't freak out if you don't want them, don't use them. <laughs> it's that simple. Kind of nestle them down just a little bit. Don't break them all up. Just let them get nice and warm and guess what? Pepper steak, Gina Young style, is done. But we need to put our last finishing touch on, which is a nice amount of black pepper. This would not be pepper steak if we didn't put a nice amount in there. Ooh, yes. When I come back, I want to say an amazing prayer. You all got to get that first bite. Take a look at it, everybody. Gina Young style pepper steak. Make you some. Listen here, everybody. If you all enjoyed this here video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know. Tell the whole world about your girl, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Let's say a quick prayer so you all can take a bite. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful day once again. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night and your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our minds in the name of Jesus. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. We bind the devil away from us in Jesus' name. Devil, you have no authority over this household. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace, and the joy. You bring us every day. Amen. Amen once again. I know you all want to bite. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to load that fork up with a little bit of rice, and then we're going in. We are going in. Ooh, look at it. Uh-huh. We want the gravy. We want all these gorgeous veggies. If it'll stay on my fork, I should have got a huge spoon because I know you all want to taste a little bit of everything. Look at that right there. Ooh-wee. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching.